Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. <clears throat> I got something for you this morning from the Lord. Without further ado, let's get right into it, shall we? Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for putting us to sleep and waking us up, Lord God. Thank you, God, for making a way for us to hear the gospel. Thank you, God, for making a way, Lord God, for your people to be saved. Thank you, Father, for sending the Son. Thank you for sending your perfectness, your holiness, your righteousness, so that we can be called children of God. Now, Father in heaven, I pray you move me out the way, Lord, and let me only speak what you want to be heard, Lord God. Let my actions show what you want to be seen, God. Use me as the vessel that you put the word in. Use me as the messenger who delivers it, God. Not my will, but your will, Father. And give us all an understanding of your word, Lord God. Help us to receive it willingly, obediently, and joyously. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, all right. Today's scripture is coming from <clears throat> um, Psalm 3. It's the whole Psalm. Psalm 3, verses 1 through 8. <clears throat> and it says, Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. Selah. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. Selah. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. I would not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O God, God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. <laughs> your blessing is upon your people. <laughs> Selah. <clears throat> God bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. <clears throat> oh, let me get this off the screen here right quick. All 
Uh, <clears throat> I know you'd heard this before. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Or I ain't going to lose no sleep over it. You know what I'm saying? People, that, that's a common phrase used by people who are indicating that the situation, the circumstance, or the person, or the people, the, it, it does not bother them too much. It's not going to cause them to worry, to be up at night, to be woke, and what have you. <laughs> or, or, the, or, or, you know, the thing is not going to worry them. That, that's what people say. It's not going to make me lose. I, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Um, Satan often sends many of his helpers. I've had... Uh, uh, I had minions in there, but that's probably the best word is helpers. Because Satan, and, and you know, instead of putting demons and spirits, out, his help. These are the, the Satan dispatches his helpers to 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 from many angles, all directions against God's children. He sends he sent he he attacks uh he tries to attack finances, uh, marriages, relationships careers, homes, your thoughts, your health, your wealth, anything that he can get a hold, that he can get inside of, he gonna get in there. And he don't attack one thing at a time. He go from all directions. It's to keep you preoccupied. It's to keep you focused on those things so that he can uh, 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 sneak on in with some sin and separate you from God. And else he's trying to keep you from hearing what God is saying. And thank you, Lord, that I was just reading yesterday uh, in the uh, um, Joshua, Judges. Man, I think it was the book of Judges. Which it was It was probably around chapter 5 or chapter 6. Chapter 6 or chapter 7. I'm not sure where it was. But uh, they, they sent an ambush. They sent, they sent, uh, they went to war. They sent people toward them, toward the front. And the people who who they went to war against came out to fight, so they was face to face. Boom, 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 boom. At the same time, he had an ambush around behind them. So while they was focusing on what was in front of them, the people behind them came into the city and set it on fire. You know, you heard the story. He said, and these these were children of God who set the ambush. I, I can't tell you who it was. It was probably Gideon. I, I mean, I was just skimming through it trying to prepare something. Uh, for my wife, but I was in the wrong book. I probably doing something from Judges. I'm way over, I'm from Joshua. I'm way over there, Judges. Half sleep, full. I had been doing a lot of stuff, and so I ended up having to go and redo all of it. But I did. But this is no coincidence that the Lord showed me in the book of Judges last night that this this is just uh, the your opposition coming at you and and attacking you from the front. And, and, and drawing your attention away when the whole time somebody around the back and they didn't burnt down the city. That's what Satan does. If he can attack you from one position, I mean, from yeah, and he causes you to, to, to focus on that one thing, he gets your mind off of prayer or, or scripture reading or attending church or, or go, a Bible study or doing something. When he gets your mind off of just sitting down and meditating, listening for God, he got you. If he can separate you from God, he know he got you. If Satan can separate you from God, he's got you. Now, God doesn't leave us. God doesn't forsake us. God doesn't leave us alone. It's just we walk away from God. We we might go walk towards something. We hear, we hear, uh, we hear a noise over there in the dark, and we go that direction to investigate it. When something going on back here behind us, and we should have stayed focused on that thing in the first place. Just like Peter walking on the water. He walked on the water until he looked around, and then he started to sink. That's what Satan does. He 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 attacks from every angle, from all directions, to try to see where he can get you get you at, where you want to where he can get your attention at and get your focus on. So when he gets your focus and your attention drawn in this place right here, then he can attack another place. And it ain't gonna tear you down because you ain't even paying attention over there. And I, I, I don't have an example prepared of a, of a, of a, of a practical application of this. But if, um, oh yeah, but okay, here's one. But you at work, say you the employer or the employee, and you have a a a, a female coworker, boss, or something, anything. And um, the enemy might be attacking. 
the company or whatever causing you to to have, causing your mind to be so bound up in how you can get this thing back on its feet and you have and, and and you're a man and you got this woman who you're spending a lot of time with co-worker who you're spending a lot of time with because you're trying to get things back together but the whole time the enemy is taking your mind off of home and your marriage and the, and the, and the fact that uh, you and your wife just had a, a couple words today, you know, or, your, or last or all this week or last week or something. And so therefore you might be receiving comfort from this woman at work who you're spending a lot of time with. He didn't caught your mind up on, 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 on the work project where he calls and where he, don't, where, where you don't know that he's slipping into your marriage. He's trying to get you to put some trust, some confidence, some happiness in this other woman, you know, I mean, that's just a practical example of how the enemy can attack two things at once. And he really, he really trying to separate marriages. He really trying to tear down families. He really trying to, he knows that a house divided against itself cannot stand. So he really trying to take the husband away from the wife or take the, the man away from the family so he can't raise the children up, raise the sons up to be great leaders and men of the community. So Satan is, is subtle, but he's tricky. He, that why you, whoo, that why you gotta watch him. It says be watchful, like a, he walks around like a roaring lion, looking for somebody to devour, somebody to tear up, somebody to destroy and consume. And so he tried to attack all different angles just to get you. So we when he get just so we can get into that weak spot. And when he get into that weak spot, he said, "Yeah, now I'm gonna intensify what's going on over there in front of him." So I can sneak on in further and further and further. And once I get in, I can set the city on fire. As long as I intensify the battle in front of his eyes, I can set the city on fire within. And he'll never know I was there until it's too late. That's what that's how Satan thinks. Um, so when he attacks things, sometimes those things are still in our minds when we go to bed. And they could possibly keep you up. They could possibly keep you up. You know what I'm saying? They could have you. Uh, they could have you worrying or, 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 or sleepless or restless or weary, you know, and then then you might not be able to hear from God because you're tired or you're sleeping, or you might not be able to get no rest at night. And so it affects other areas of your life. And if he can get you to stay up all night and be tired at work, you never know what else, what other areas he might try to attack while you're being tired at work. He might try to make you unaware of something you're doing that's dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Uh, say, say you're an electrician and he got you tired and you sitting there you think you didn't lock, turn the power off on something, but you turned it off when it worked on it, when it turned it back on, turned it off when it worked on it, turned it back on, and then went over there and started working on it while it's still alive because you're tired, because you're weary, because the enemy keeping you up at night with worry or with, or he might be attacking your marriage or your your, your children or something. And, you know, he's, he's subtle, he's tricky, so we got to watch him. Uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't call it sin, and I wouldn't call it a command, but in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us not to worry. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, maybe around 24, up to the end of the chapter. You know, a very familiar verse is uh, 6.33 when it says, uh, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and, 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 and all the other things will be given to you. Right before he says that part, he talks about worry. So it's probably 24 through 31 or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> but but uh, Jesus says not to worry. But how can we not worry or not necessarily worry but how can we not just think about things that significantly impact our lives and the lives of our loved ones how can we not think about those things how can those things not be on our mind when when it when it's concerning uh our our, our loved ones uh health or life or financial situation or the emotional or spiritual situation how can we not think about those things how can we not think about something that's going to impact us significantly might make a major change to our life or or to our health how can we not think about those things we don't have to worry about them but how can we not how are we going to just cross those things out of our mind and pretend like they don't exist pretend like it's not something that uh that's going on right now <clears throat> you know i have been using a technique to control my emotions i tell you i'm i, I admit i'm an emotional person I have been using the technique to control my emotions. And this technique works for worry as well. Because um, yesterday, yesterday I wasn't worrying, but something was on my mind. You know what I'm saying? That um, 
that I'll think about and I will start trying to take action to to make to to prevent something else from happening. That's how I am. If I see something coming down the road, I'ma take action. I'm gonna prepare for it. But uh and it might be out of my hand, but I still try to take so the technique that I use when trying to when to control my emotions is this. Um I say, uh, <clears throat> what do you want, Ed? Simple. That's it. That, it seems simple. Because I told somebody, I may tell a lot of people this. I said, I, anger or, or frustration or well, anger, I'm going to be real with you. Anger does not allow me to think. You know what I'm saying? Being, and anger is a, is a high, intensified form of frustration. First, you're irritated, and then you're frustrated. Then there's anger. But it can be boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? So when I see that anger is coming, I say, what do you want, Ed? And simply because I say, what do you want, Ed? It gives me time to say, wait a minute. What do you want? And I can tell God what I want. That's my key. That's my secret. I ask myself, what do you want, Ed? And I tell God what I want. And if I say, man, that it, it, it really gives me time to think. I say, is that what I really want? Wow. Why do I want that? You know, God, wait a minute, God, this is what I want right here. God, and, and then when I say it can work, it works for worry too. If you think about if you if something's on your mind, you can't sleep, you can't work, can't do whatever it is that's preventing you from doing, you say and you and you just take one second to say, What do you want? Ask yourself, what do you want? And then you say, Okay, this is what I want, because it just gives you time to think about the best uh or uh, outcome for your situation. And then say, okay, well, this will be ideal. This will work. This will be good for this situation. And then you can tell it to God. See there? You, but you have to just say what you want. And you can tell, and you can talk to God for a second. I always used to say, I go and pray, and, and this, I have to stop and go and pray. But sometimes I can't think to go and pray. It had been, I've been 10, I'd be 10 minutes in, and I'm like, whoa, I've been 10 minutes like this. All type of thoughts that ran through my head, thoughts of, vengeance thoughts of unforgiveness thoughts of uh, 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 uh of, of, of payback malice malicious thoughts sinful thoughts for 10 minutes before i say wait a minute and go pray but now whoo thank you lord now i say what do you want man what do you want it immediately i say what do you want and that gives me time to go to god with my situation you know what i'm saying and i get to tell him what i want he might not give me what i want <laughs> Sometimes what sometimes the stuff we won't be foolish. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes anxiety, worry, doubt, fear, anger, aggression, emotions make us want want some things that are foolish. You know what I'm saying? But when we go to God, He'll give us He'll give us a solution to it. Might not be what you want, but He also solve your problem though. He might just show you that what you want is the wrong thing. He often do that too. Uh, and so, and so this work with worry and restlessness and sleeplessness, if you, if you're dealing with these things, um, it gives us time to think. And then the, the, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. See, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I say, what do you want it? It's time to verbally express my request to God. See, it's something about verbally expressing your request to God. Maybe it's the fact that you have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is hearing what you're saying, and he's relaying that right back to your spirit in a, in, in, a, in a fraction of a second. You hear what you're saying, you're like, wait a minute. And then you and then so now you can talk to God for a little while. You might talk. I know most time I, I just I just go and tell him one or two, it's a couple seconds, one or two lines. But then I know I'll say, wait a minute, why do I want that? Why do I want things to go this way? Why and why is this thing right here? frustrating me to the point where I feel like I'm about to be mad about it if it don't go the way I want it to go. But you know what I'm saying? And But the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus only if you make your request known to God. It says, be not anxious for anything, but in all things, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You have to let your requests be made known to God. You can go down the road of worrying and anxiety and fear and doubt and anger and jealousy and wrath 
or you can go down the road of talking to God about it. It's two choices. No matter what, no matter which one of those things you pick down there, it's it's on the other side of over here. On the right side, you got to take it to God. On the left side, you got to keep it for yourself. See what I'm saying? No matter how important or how unimportant you think it is, you need to take it to God before it gets into something else where you can't control it or you can't or you can't or you or you or you can't navigate it uh, in a rightful manner. In, in a godly manner, in a, in a stressless manner. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I say God's peace takes over as I realize that it's all in his hand. Worry, doubt, fear, sleeplessness. When you take it to God and tell God what you want, what you need, what you feel like you need, you just tell them what you want because a lot of times we don't know what we need, but we know what we want. Though You, you can ask for something, you know what you want, don't necessarily mean it, that you need that thing or that's good for you because you say you need it. When you, But the thing is, when you ask God for it, take it to God, you realize that it's in God's hand. That's the good part about it. When you, t when you, you, If you take something to God, your God, our God, the almighty God, when you take something to him, it's in his hand. You realize it's under his control and you realize that he's going to work it out for the good of those who love him. God works things out for the good of those who love him, and he works it out for his kingdom, all of his children. God works it out for us, believe it or not. So you can, re so, so you know that while we trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. While you trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. So when worry, doubt, anxiety, Restlessness, fear, any of those things come, ask yourself what you want, and then tell Jesus what you want. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning, God. Thank you, Lord, that I can bring all of it to you. Ooh, Jesus, you say your burden is light. You say your load is light, Lord Jesus, and we should just take your yoke. Take the take the take your yoke, Jesus, and let go of the burden of the world. Let go of the yoke of the world. Let go of the cares of the world. Let go of the idols of the world. Let go of the worry in the world. Let go of all the things in the world, Jesus, and just take your yoke, your burden, which is so light. Show your people how light your burden is, Lord Jesus. Father God in heaven, show your people that they can just put it in your hand and walk away and let you deal with it. They can put any kind of worry, any type of doubts, any type, any type of hopelessness, any type of emotions, any type of fear in your hand, Lord God, and let you deal with it and let you fix it. Even for those who have not come to you, Lord God, show them that they can just put it in your hand and come to you, Lord, and just come as they are, Lord God. Seeing it all, sinful nature and all, Lord God, and that you will fix the problem, that you will fix their hearts, and you will fix their lives, Lord God, because you are the doctor, the healer, the repairman, the carpenter, the everything. Thank you, God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord God, and thank you for saving our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. That's it for Morning Cup with Jesus. If the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back on here tomorrow morning around the same time. I might be in a different location, different background, but we're going to be on here around 6.45 a.m. tomorrow morning, if the Lord will. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you. Thank you.
Thank you.